Breaking right now, billionaire Elon Musk has reversed course yet again and is once again proposing to buy Twitter. Billionaire Elon Musk is trying to buy Twitter again. Yet again. In fact, sources are telling CNBC that he sent a letter to the company proposing to move forward with the original deal at $54.20 per share. Twitter shares remain halted amid reports that Tesla founder Elon Musk will go ahead with his $44 billion buyout. The Elon Musk making headlines after news that he's reviving his $44 billion deal to buy Twitter. The stock halted for about three hours, but after it reopened, it surged more than 20 percent to close out the session at 52 even. That's out the door. That's blown up. So to me, I think the service probably gets worse before it gets better. I don't know how they they monetize it better if they're going to be losing users, which I suspect they will, especially if they're going to bring like Magatown back to the thing. So to me, I I, you know, I I don't know. I I, I mean, you guys are snickering, but that's a real issue here. Elon Musk has sent a letter to Twitter saying that he wants to proceed with fifty four dollars, 20 cents a share, which would value Twitter at around forty four billion dollars. I don't know. You know what I'm really confused about is there's no. No price concession here. How will this impact Tesla? Well, I'm thinking it's going to make the uh, business uh, books on how not to buy a company. He said at the TED Talk this wasn't about money or the economic value. It was about the democracy of Twitter. In this video, a truly shocking turn of events which literally no one could possibly have seen coming. Sources confirming that Elon Musk intends on following through with his acquisition of Twitter after all. And before we get into it, if you want to instantly unlock over 100 exclusive videos plus my 10-year Tesla stock price targets and loads of other perks, including optional access to my Tesla valuation model, join our growing community of thousands of supporters on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. Yeah, I mean, you and Ed were kind of hitting on it, right? Obviously, Elon Musk is saying, hey, let's get back to this original deal that we had in April. Twitter has said, hey, we want to close this at 54.20 per share, which is what they've been saying all along. Now, you would think, okay, both sides are at the exact same spot, right? That was the agreement that was in April. Now, the fact that there is a little bit of reservation here or hesitation just goes to show how much distrust has uh, you know, come up between these two sides over this process, right? So the fact that both of them are saying they want the exact same thing on the same day And yet people are still waiting to say, well, let's wait until it's officially signed on the dotted line. (laughs) That just kind of gives you a sense of how this has played out, that that everyone is going to hold their breath until this becomes final, final, uh, which we may find out in the next couple of days. Right. And who can blame them? Right. Uh, As a Tesla investor, Ross, you weren't happy about Elon Musk trying to buy Twitter at all. You got out of Twitter. What are you thinking now? Well, I'm thinking it's going to make the uh, business uh, books on how not to buy a company. Before we hear any further from Ross, I just want to point out the obvious that a few people may be missing. This isn't a business transaction. Elon Musk isn't investing in Twitter. He's not trying to make money. He's trying to uphold. In fact, fuck it. Let me explain exactly why Elon's buying Twitter. Let's get straight to the point. Some court documents here. Some private messages exchanged between Elon Musk, Joe Rogan, Jack, as in the Jack, founder of Twitter, and so on. Page 14, link in description if you want to follow through and read this in detail. Elon Musk sends a link to Parag Agrawal, CEO of Twitter, from some guy with three first names, describing it as a pretty good summary. And again, just confirming, this was sent from Elon Musk, denoted as self, to none other than Parag Agrawal. So exactly what was contained in this tweet, with a pretty good summary of Elon's intentions, with Twitter. Three first names guy says, I suspect in approximate order of priority, Elon Musk wants to, one, uphold free speech principles, two, departisanize and open source the algorithm, three, end spam bots, and bonus, four, reinstate those banned as a result of number one or two, failure to uphold free speech principles and partisan political bias in the algorithm. And the second bonus point, number five here, reduce the probability of algorithm induced echo chambers. Also, Elon Musk's stake has created a lot of great discussion. One of the most promising ideas floated. Give all users the option to verify ID to obtain a blue check mark and no check marks to anyone without ID. Maybe even an option to filter content by verified user versus not verified user. This is an imperfect solution and a huge overhead to implement, but it's the best idea I've heard to deal with anonymous trolls and should be a somewhat useful quality filter. 
Yes, obviously in many cases people prefer or need to remain anonymous, but I haven't heard a better idea. So once again, just to sum things up on screen now, the tweet that Elon literally sent to Parag summarizing his intentions with the Twitter acquisition. It's right here, ladies and gentlemen, on screen now. I'm just gonna skip through a few other highlights from a more recent tweet thread. I engaged with Chancery Daily, bad idea. Extreme, extreme bias, blinding his, her, them, they's ability to accurately assess the situation. Thought it was worth engaging, but I've since seen some tweets that have confirmed. Not thinking straight, but I did try my best. I'm not gonna go through this whole tweet thread, just a few key points. I posted this on September 19th. Regarding Elon Musk's Twitter acquisition, a thread. One, Elon wants this deal to close. Huh, imagine that. Elon wants this deal to close. I thought everyone was saying he wanted to get out of the deal. He changed his mind. The stock market crashed and now he no longer wanted to buy Twitter. Wrong. He just doesn't want to get f***ed over. Two, Elon is not one to play games. His online troll persona is not a barometer for how seriously he takes serious matters. Three, Twitter has not satisfactorily substantiated their bot MDAO claims to Elon Musk. Assume the above three points are true. I am adamant they are. Even if you disagree, it will help you think clearly on this matter and see things from my perspective, aka he wants a deal to close and the deal's gonna close. Aged well. Just two final tweets here. In short, I think most experts are going in with bad assumptions, which are blinding them to the reality here, aka that Elon still wants to buy Twitter, as I've been saying from the get. He just doesn't want to get f***ed over in the process. And the final one here. Of course, I am just a deluded Elon fanboy who doesn't know anything about anything, and therefore I am definitely wrong about this, just like I am always wrong about all matters relating to Elon. The sarcasm is strong with this one. So I just wanted to share that before we get back to the comments from Ross Gerber about this business deal being one for the books, how not to buy business and so on. Nowhere in my reasoning or Elon's intentions for buying Twitter was there anything at all the f*** to do with make money, monetize the website more, increase shareholder value, none of it. That was not there. Now don't get me wrong, obviously Elon's not a moron. He's got some ideas to monetize the website, but you have to look at this not as a business transaction, not as an investment, but a massive philanthropic project. And again, Elon's no idiot. Obviously you can monetize the website, lots of room for improvement, therefore it can be a piece of philanthropy that is self-sustaining over the long term. But everyone seems to be looking at this as if it's a financial transaction for Elon Musk. Oh Elon, oh, the stock market's down, he doesn't want the deal anymore. Bro, just listen. Listen to his fucking reasoning. He told everyone why he wanted to buy Twitter. Take the man at his word. It's so easy. He's literally created a huge loss for himself by really the way he's handled this because a lot has changed inside Twitter in the last four months as well, including a mass amount of high quality individuals who worked at Twitter leaving and a lot more planning on leaving. These points are true again. Ross is looking at this through a financial lens. It is true. Elon has caused value destruction at Twitter. He's exposed the company and half the staff has been completely and utterly useless. And yes, there are many woke morons who are now gonna leave the company because they're scared. Big Daddy Elon, who hates people, hates free speech. He's a Nazi, racist, sexist, misogynist, homophobe because I read it on the news. They're gonna leave, which is a good thing. <laughs> Clearing out the infection from this company is a good thing for the future of Twitter. So he's paying the highest price possible. He's trying to get dead at the worst time possible. He's basically, being forced to buy this company. It's not like he changed of heart. I think his lawyers just told him he was going to lose. And so this is what I thought the whole time. And I got out of this mess because I didn't want to be involved with this mess. And I'm grateful I did. I lost a little money, but, but this is a mess. It's really not great for Elon. That said, I'm glad that it's going to come to a conclusion. And, and hopefully as a Tesla investor, we can get back to focusing on the most exciting company in the world. Uh, Kurt, Let's talk a little bit about how Twitter is digesting this, you know, because they haven't dropped their litigation in talking to my sources. You know, if you're Twitter, you're going to want some certainty. Is, is, is he really serious right now? Is this right. uh, really it? What are you hearing from the Twitter camp about what their next move is? Right. Well, to your point, going back to that distrust I was talking about earlier, right, there, there's not a lot of incentive. Uh, for anyone to simply say, uh, we're going to drop everything we're doing because this guy said X, right? And so I think, you know, uh, my understanding is that Twitter would need to stay or essentially, re you know, retract its lawsuit against Musk in order for him to sign this. Um, presumably, you know, if they believe that he's operating in good faith, that would be the next step was that they'd say, okay, the lawsuit's over. Let's get back to the original agreement. But Again, the fact that we're even discussing this, it just shows how fractured that relationship has been. And Emily, we've talked about this before. What's crazy is this is now who they want to run Twitter, right? A person that they've kind of painted as a liar, someone that they painted as, as uh, you know, not uh, prepared to operate this social network, and yet they're fighting to get him to do it. 
that's where employees are today, right? They're suddenly waking up and saying, okay, now this kind of, in some of their minds, worst case scenario is coming true, which means that they're going to have a new boss very shortly. And it's someone that they might not necessarily agree with on a bunch of different things. These are fair comments. I just want to emphasize the absolute hilarity here. The snowflakes at Twitter, not all of them, most of them, with their panties in a twist, because they may be working for somebody who on at least one single subject disagrees with them, doesn't believe the one true narrative. Oh my God, what are you going to do? Can't be working for somebody that doesn't believe absolutely everything you believe. By the way, just for anyone wondering, I, I do currently support the current thing. What's the current thing we're supporting now? If Elon doesn't support all the current things, then I'm a little bit scared to work for him. Right. And you know, from many perspectives, Twitter's in a worse position than it was when Elon Musk decided to buy the company because of what's happened with morale, what's happened with folks leaving the company. Um, on the Tesla side, Ross, you know, clearly investors are concerned about this, given the reaction in the stock. Do you believe the concern is more that he might sell Tesla stock to finance this deal or the key man risk that his attentions are going to be even more divided? So, you know, from the perspective of Tesla, he sold a lot of stock already and it's been an overhang all year from those sales. And if he has to sell, you know, another couple billion, it's a huge company and and that'll be that. And so it takes away that uncertainty. Either way, I don't think it's that material from an economic perspective. But I think the second issue you brought up is material, which is being CEO of three major companies is not something humans can do well. And so I get that he thinks he can do this, but this is now a media property, which is very different than running a space or EV, which are both technology companies. And and the dynamics it takes to run a media company is completely opposite from his skill set. And that's been more than proven by the way he's handled the employees of Twitter, like at the all hands meeting. I feel for Ross way off the fucking mark. Don't get me wrong. His points are valid in terms of Elon's impact on the employees and the morale at Twitter. But Ross seems to be under the impression that Elon's goal is to have high employee morale rather than to, oh, I don't know, fix an existential threat. It's a good thing that some of the employees, especially the woke morons at Twitter, have their panties in a twist and are willing to leave the company, are scared of working for big bad daddy Elon. That's a good thing. He's trying to cleanse the company of this insane woke mind virus to uphold the principles of free speech rather than, oh, I don't know, to suppress free speech, to censor articles, information, facts. Oops, that was an accident. I just don't think Ross really gets it. Let me give you guys a meta example. Self-awareness matters. I know that when I drop F-bombs, talk about Mary Jane and share my highly controversial opinions, some subset of my audience gets pissed off. People unsubscribe. They don't like hearing it. Now, Ross would be saying to me, Stephen, you've got to stop swearing, bro, and maybe not the backwards hat, bro. You look unprofessional. You're losing subscribers. Ross may mistakenly assume that I, too, am trying to run my YouTube channel like a business and maximize profits. I'm not. Big difference. Some people just don't get this. Elon has the awareness. He knows what he's doing. He knows the impact of his actions on employee morale at Twitter. This is intentional. There's going to be a huge cleansing at this company. Most of the dead weight's going to flee voluntarily. It's much better than having to fire people who are useless. And I think you guys are being nice saying that there's distrust. It's not distrust, it's hate. They hate him, okay? <laughs> He's created a situation. He created it. And I love Elon. You know, I, I'm, I'm a fan and supporter. Don't get me wrong. But I have friends at Twitter, and they hate him. So this is like two getting two divorced people who hate each other to now get married again. Now, if I'm Twitter, I'm not going to get rid of this lawsuit at all. I'm going to force specific performance on Elon because there's no trust there at all. So this is a really, really difficult situation. And I think that's the risk, the key man risk to Tesla is that now he gets this company and, you know, like, tell me what day is going to be easy for him at Twitter. There's a spectrum. On one end, you have easy. On the other end, you have important. See where I'm going with this? Multi-decade track record hasn't quite made the point obvious. Elon will always opt for difficult and necessary over easy. And the reality is, Kurt, let me know if I'm right here. I mean, Elon Musk could own Twitter in a matter of days, right? This could all happen really quickly. That's right. Well, all of the, the kind of stipulations for the deal closing have, have already happened, uh, including the shareholder vote, which we you know covered last uh, in September last month. And so, you know, yes, this could all happen very quickly. What I find kind of crazy and, and sort of uh, ironic and hilarious, right, is that the last guy who ran Twitter essentially was asked to to leave because he had two jobs. Right. And now the guy who's running Twitter is going to have three jobs. Uh, this has been said before, but it, it, the irony here, Emily, is is quite strong. 
Strong, indeed. Uh, Ross, as a Tesla shareholder, what's your biggest concern about how, you know, he plans to run Twitter, if he plans to run Twitter, how involved he plans to be in management, and what would you like to see? I'm assuming a more hands-off approach. You know, this whole thing is, uh, you know, I don't know how he got himself into this, but, you know, and he's a very smart guy, so I don't know. But that said, I mean, I, I just don't know where this goes. Like, uh, so I think the most important thing is that he stay as much out of politics as possible. And, and obviously that's just not going to happen. And it's going to create a lot of, lot of negativity towards him. And, and, you know, I just, it's a really politically difficult environment to have an opinion about politics in this day and age. And of course, I'll take it from there. Let's just pick up where Ross left off. And of course, Elon Musk has giant balls and cares about what he believes to be right rather than avoiding ever ruffling any feathers. So of course, Elon's going to continue to Elon and many people won't like it, but nothing's going to change. You see, Elon is one of the few human beings who's willing to do and say what he believes to be important, irrespective of the consequences. It's called courage. You all in the media know this more than anybody. And, and every time he makes political statements, he's attacked mercilessly and, and much of it for good reason. So that, I think, is the problem with him running Twitter, is it puts him square in the face of a lot of issues that have nothing to do with Tesla. This is absolutely true. That will affect people's perception of Tesla. And, you know, I think it's, there's a point in time where Tesla's a big enough company and it's, it's now where it's not that it, it's like Elon needs to give a little bit of control up so that investors feel more confident about the secession plan. This is what I've been talking about for like years, that there needs to be a strong number to it at Tesla and there needs to be a, a deeper management best bench. And Tesla tells me all the time how great all these young people are, which I agree, but I'm like, you need to promote these people and you need to show and give these people some power over the business because the perception right now is exactly what you're saying is now this guy runs three public companies and in different industries. Like once again, I don't think that's possible. So something's got to give hmm. and, you know, hopefully it's not Tesla. That's for sure. And Kurt, we're four weeks away from an election. Um, mm -hmm. You know, how are folks at Twitter thinking about this? If this does happen right in a matter of days, yep. the election is four weeks away. Take a moment. Just take a moment. No, really. Take a moment. The fact that this question was even asked, what the fuck does an election have to do with Elon Musk purchasing Twitter? Nothing. At least it shouldn't. Why should it matter? Why would Elon Musk wanting to uphold the principles of free speech be relevant to an upcoming election? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know the answer. It's actually super relevant because prior to now, Twitter was doing their best to influence the outcome of elections, in my opinion. Of course, I'm actually just a raging MAGA fanboy. What? That's a MAGA fanboy? That's not the word, is it? MAGA something or other? Anyway, Orange Man bad support, obviously. I just hate the world and hate people, and that's why I said that. Nothing to do with the suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop story just before the presidential election. Oops, that was an accident. I'm so sorry we banned that account and stopped people even sharing the link in private messages. Yeah, so, um, mm, Twitter, election interference. Those days are numbered. Yeah. And Elon has said repeatedly he doesn't, you know, agree with a lot of Twitter's policies. He doesn't uh, necessarily think they're necessary, right? These are things that have been kind of implemented over years, right, over multiple election cycles. And, uh, you know, the big one, of course, is he said he would bring back President Donald Trump on the Twitter if, if he was owning the company, right? And there is a chance that all of those different things could come you know, into play over these next couple of weeks in the lead up to to the U.S. midterms and, and, you know, not even looking ahead to whatever happens in 2024. So I do think that there's a lot of people who are very conscious of that, uh, who are probably very worried about that, mostly because they just don't exactly know what he's going to repeal or take away if he indeed, you know, becomes a CEO and how quickly they would move on something like that. But given where we are with this election, it has to be noted that that, that kind of stuff could play a factor. Sorry, we need to talk about this more. I just Can we please just take a moment to let this sink in? It's as if the host on Bloomberg and the guest both are aware that if Orange Man Bad is allowed back on Twitter, that may influence the outcome of future elections. So if we follow this logically, wouldn't that imply the fact that Orange Man Bad is currently permanently banned from Twitter? If we connect the dots there, wouldn't that suggest that everyone knows the fact that Orange Man Bad has been banned from Twitter has had an impact? in terms of past elections? No, I'm just kidding. No, that's not possible. Are you surprised that it that it is looking like it's ending up this way? 
Not really. I mean, he said at the TED Talk this wasn't about money or the economic value. It was about the democracy of Twitter. And so I think there's been so many twists and turns, and it, it's been it's been a roller coaster that I, I don't think that anyone... If you listen to the TED Talk, I think he was very clear that this wasn't a way to make money. I'm shocked. Somebody weighing in on Elon Musk's Twitter acquisition whose brain is online and has been online the entire time, pointing out the obvious. This was never a financial deal. He's not surprised. I mean, bro... My new hero. Where have these people been this entire time? Logic, reason, taking the man at his word. Will wonders never cease? What is it? what what is the status of the company that he is buying now? Employees? How's the business doing? Feels like in the market, given what's happened in the stock market and in, in the tech stock sector in particular, it would have been a long way from fifty four twenty at this point. Naturally. Yeah, I mean, I think he also has to understand that uh, this has caused a lot of pain on the company. There have been a lot of employee departures. There has been a loss of faith among the advertisers. And so he needed to get this deal. If you really wanted it in the long term, he, he needed to cut cut this off and, and get, get it moving because he's just inflicting more damage on the story than he needs to. So I think this is good. We're moving on. We have clarity. It was in a holding pattern. Are, are we going to land at the runway? Are we taking off? There's clarity now. So I think that he needed to do that because it, it's been, uh, they've lost a lot of goodwill among the advertisers. The advertisers have gone other places. The users uh, have, have, dr have drifted. Uh, so they've got a lot to do to kind of repair the story now. And so now it goes back to get the deal closed. All fair points. By the way, here's another prediction that will age stunningly well. I did just say that it will age stunningly well. Timestamp it, put a link, keep it handy because it will. Elon's Twitter turnaround plan does not involve major monetization from advertisers. That's Twitter's current model. That's how they make most of their money today. Advertising, guess what? This will not be the case in the future. Now, how can I possibly know? Why could I arrogantly, confidently say this out loud right now on a YouTube video before anyone actually has any proof that this is the case? Again, go back to what Elon Musk said. A social media platform cannot allow itself to give up its nuts to place them in the hands of advertisers who mostly are infected by the woke mind virus. Advertisers currently have Twitter by the balls. So too, the woke mind virus. There's a lot of overlap between those two things. This needs to be unwound. You can count on it. Elon Musk's turnaround plan with Twitter has substantial other revenue sources for the company. Elon's goal here is to untether Twitter from its current reliance on advertisers to keep the company afloat. This isn't to say advertising's going away. It's just to say that Elon will find other ways to massively monetize the website that don't allow advertisers to have the company by the balls. Timestamp it, keep it on file, this will play out. I'll be playing this clip in the future going, hey, I called it, no one saw it coming, but how did I know again? I know it sounds arrogant, but how else do I explain that I know that I'm gonna be right before I'm right, other than to say I know I'm gonna be right before I'm right. What about the, the status of Twitter's business? The, with, the, with the advertising market weakening and even the stalwarts like a Google starting to feel the pain. Yeah, I mean, the economic headwinds are going to put more pressure on all the ad names across the board, Meta, Google, Amazon, you go through the list. That's a reality. And we've seen it in every downturn, advertisers turn, turn off. They're really going to turn off the platforms where there's uncertainty. And so Twitter is going to face this in the, in the interim that they're going to not have the faith among the advertiser community as we go into an economic storm. So they have to they have to act quick. He has got to get mm -hmm. the playbook out, get this deal done and, and move forward. Uh, because right now it, it's, it's in a tailspin. That's out the door, that's blown up. So to me, I think the service probably gets worse before it gets better. I don't know how they, they monetize it better if they're gonna be losing users, which I suspect they will, especially if they're gonna bring like Magatown back to the thing. So to me, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, you guys are snickering, but that's a real issue here. You know why everyone on the panel is snickering and laughing at Dan? Once again, the emotional infant has come out. Wah, wah, wah. I'm gonna clap like a They're literally laughing at him having another emotional tantrum on CNBS about Elon Musk. It's hilarious and embarrassing and kind of shameful. This ain't the first time Dan's lost the plot. Think about this for a moment. Can you imagine being such an infant, emotionally speaking, that you would immediately cease to use a service you enjoy and value simply because the person who owns the company doesn't agree with every single thing that you agree with? Seriously. I mean, talk about juvenile. This is a dummy spit. The unfortunate thing is no one's going to miss this guy. Well, I, I mean, the, the idea of less censorship okay, is, so is clearly one of his friends. Yeah. Well, you're wearing your Twitter jacket today, so you, you seem on board. It's a coincidence, oh, okay. by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So let's let's say they reinstate Donald Trump onto Twitter. Yeah. Would you leave the service? Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I don't I don't need to be there for that. I'm not on Truth Social for a reason. Though. Seriously, this is an emotional infant. He's just said out loud on air that he intends on leaving Twitter if Donald Trump is allowed back on the platform. What? That would be like me saying I'm leaving Australia because there's one person in Australia who did something that I don't like. And therefore, I can't even live in the same country as this person. Is this, does this guy, what planet is this guy on? I guess if you can't cancel Elon, just cancel yourself. <laughs> uh, you know, and no one other than like QAnon well, MAGA conspiracy. You don't have to follow him at all. You don't have to see anything about Donald Trump or from Donald Trump on Twitter. And that is the beauty of I Twitter. I think we're all, why we, wouldn't, we why were talking about in the break. It? We all use it much less. We don't really engage with it. I don't know how they monetize it. I don't see a lot of ads. I don't do micro commerce. I don't do, there's a lot of things that are e-commerce. I'm not doing that on that. So to me, if I don't find it. You just it, lost relevancy in general though. I think is what a lot of us are saying. Yeah. I, I don't know that. For well, me, when it's not a publicly traded company, we're going to be talking about it far less. And I actually think of that course. actually hurts the relevancy within certain verticals also. I, I don't know. You know what I'm really confused about is there's no price concession here, right? He, he's not saying, oh, okay, 52 a share. Like, give, give me something. Price in the risk of maybe going to trial and losing. He's just caving at 54.20. So I'm waiting to see if there's another concession that he's asking for to justify that price. It is bonkers to me that he hasn't proposed any 54 flat. Give me a 20 cent discount on the share price just to price in the risk of the trial. That's that's crazy to me. It is Musk, as David said. You can never really know what's going on in his brain. Or can you? Speak for yourself, brother. Uh, but that to me is just the weirdest part of this. It's not a settlement offer, it's just caving. Continuing to follow that breaking news of Elon Musk reversing course and deciding to follow through on plans to buy Twitter at 54.20 per share. How will this impact Tesla? Senior Autos reporter Proz Subramanian here with more. The stock was really neutral all day and then popped up uh, 2.6, nearing 3% at the moment. Presumably no negative impact, or at least in the eyes of investors, Proz. You know, there might be some, a little bit of an overhang being removed because te- uh, Musk did have some shares pledged for the sale. So, you know, that was pledged. He's probably going to sell. Uh, mm-hmm. I think debt financing around $13 billion, so he needs to you know, recoup the, or, or to get the rest of that money in place to make this $44 billion deal. So you know, there's that financial element for the stock. So I think it's, like you just saw right there, a little effect, but it should be going away. I think the big picture is what is Musk going to do now right, with Twitter? Is he going to be, how hands-on is he going to be? Is he going to say, hey, I want to be chairman of the board? Or hey, I'm going to be hands-off and be like uh, Jeff Bezos and let the, I'll install my people and let that company run itself. But I don't think he's that kind of guy. I personally expect that initially Elon will be super Super hands-on, but it'll get to a point very quickly where it can give some very simple but explicit instructions to a few capable, competent engineers and say, go do this, thank you, and just let them execute. Now, from a Tesla stock investor's point of view, I understand why folks like Ross Gerber are like, oh, this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. I get it. It can negatively affect Tesla. It can negatively affect perceptions about the company. People can be worried about Elon Musk's time being spread too thin. I'm sure if you ask most folks on Wall Street, most of those who manage money for other people, they would prefer Elon Musk resign as CEO of SpaceX shut down the boring company, shut down Neuralink, get out of Twitter and just focus solely on Tesla. But I'm willing to give the guy a little bit of slack. He's like, he's kind of has his hands in every, every little pot here. So um, the question is how far does he spread himself out? And you know, we just saw over the weekend, Tesla's Q3 numbers came out, delivery numbers, a record quarter, but below what Wall Street wanted. And there's concerns that demand might be drying up because of the economy. So uh, is Elon gonna be too spread out or too spread, spread too thin? That's, a, that's an issue that we'll probably find out more about. So a drama-filled day, let me sum things up. One, this deal will close, as I've been saying since day one. Two, it's always been about free speech. Three, yes, there'll be many people inside Twitter who hate Elon Musk, AKA themselves and are projecting outward, who'll then immediately resign from the company. This will save Elon Musk firing them. I still believe that at least half of the engineers and other folks currently employed by Twitter are completely useless, if not worse than useless, dragging the company down, so it'll be good for them to go. And finally, Elon Musk will do his absolute best to immediately transition Twitter away from being dependent on advertiser revenue to stay afloat. By the way, just a quick heads up, guys, if you haven't already seen, recently spoke to Dave Lee, Dave Lee on investing, I'm sure you all know the channel. We discussed AI Day, AGI, the Tesla humanoid robot, and the long-term future, plus plenty of other things as well. Check it out and let me know your thoughts. And of course, if you'd like to support the channel on Patreon and unlock well over 150 exclusive videos, loads of other content and perks, including up-to-date access to my Tesla stock price targets, you can join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link at the pinned comment. See you over there.
I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel and instantly unlock over 100 exclusive videos, plus my 10 year Tesla stock price targets and loads of other perks, including optional access to my Tesla valuation model, join our growing community of thousands of supporters on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themed merch in the merch store. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. Please let me know your thoughts on today's video in the comments below and click the card on screen now to watch the next video.